It was an earthquake with a magnitude of 8.9 on the Richter scale. It was the biggest quake in over 100 years with immeasurable destruction and a rising death toll. As scientists study this natural disaster, they say there were a few warning signs. There were actually uh, a, a number of earthquakes in the two days preceding this earthquake uh, that, in retrospect now, can be called foreshocks. It's very difficult to say when you see activity like this, well, we're going to have an 8.9. In fact, we can't say that with any certainty. And the havoc of the disaster continued with a 23-foot-tall tsunami. And as the country coped with the disaster on Friday, they were still dealing with the after-effects of the quake throughout the day. The U.S. Geological Survey's National Earthquake Information Center had located uh, uh, about 114 aftershocks. Now, there have been many more than that, I'm sure, but they simply can't keep up with analyzing the data because there are so many. Mobile phones weren't working for hours after the quake, and there were 4 million homes which were without power. Japan is a country where earthquakes definitely are not foreign, but to experience one of this magnitude rocked the entire area. Yellen provides more details into why the quake was so devastating. There have been uh, several magnitude 7 to 8 earthquakes along the uh, uh, this portion of the Japanese subduction zone in the past uh, uh, 30 or 40 years. It's just a very seismically active area. But, but this particular portion of the uh, subduction zone hadn't slipped for, for a, quite some time, and, and the stored energy was just released in this massive earthquake. The country continues to recover after a storm of natural disasters. The Red Cross is collecting aid for Japan, which will be accepted from any location in the province and will also be collected online. For Southwest TV News, I'm Kara Rapke.